Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Um, I mentioned this in the chat, but wanted to reiterate, um, I wanted to leave plenty of time for Q&A because that's my favorite part. So um, feel free to share as many questions as you have in the chat and in the Q&A. Um, I think the Q&A tab is the best place for it. And then we'll have plenty of time for that at the end. Um, so yeah, lots to share. Um, thank you all so much. I think I'll go ahead and get going. Um, I'm gonna give a really quick presentation on just sort of who Buffer is, what it's like to work here, and um, and then, like I said, we'll open up for a ton of questions. Um, every time I drop the like, fact that we're doing a four-day work week, there seems to be no, um, no stem to the flow of questions, and so um, I wanted to leave plenty of time to definitely talk about that one. All right, so here we go. So um, Buffer is, um, uh, here's a few things we'll cover. I'll, I'll start here, just an overview of a little bit about us, what we do, uh, what we're quote unquote famous for, um, and then a few things about us when it comes to working at Buffer. We're, we're very um, notorious in certain in certain ways around some of these things. Um, and then we'll talk about the roles we're hiring for currently. And then I also have some special uh, tips for you coming up of some roles that I know we're going to open up the rest of the year. So definitely stay tuned. Um, so just to kick things off, um, a little bit about us. We are 85 people, which actually over the last couple of days, we've added that number. I think we're about 88 at this point um, with 23, probably 25 different countries at this time. Um, so that's really cool and exciting for us. Um, uh, feel free to share where you're from in the chat. I always love hearing that. Um, we do hire from every country. Um, and so um, we're always really proud to, to add to that, to that roster. Um, we are a social media management software for small businesses. Um, everything from scheduling posts, analyzing them, engaging with customers, everything from one platform, from one dashboard. Um, and our goal is, of course, to help um, businesses grow their social presence online. Um, and that is evolving and changing and growing, and we're excited to continue to challenge ourselves and build even more products for small businesses. We are uh, famous and well known for um, being uh, transparent, some would say radically transparent. Um, in about 2013, I believe it was, or 2012, we published all of our salaries transparently online. And it was a really big deal at the time, and it continues to be a big deal. Um, and we do believe it's a great way for us to work and uh, a good practice for many companies in, in that sense. And we believe that it benefits um, helping other businesses learn how to grow and operate their business. And we also feel like it makes us better and more accountable within our own salary practices and internal um, processes. Um, and then, of course, this year and uh, the last half of last year, we've been doing a four-day work week. So I will share a lot more about that. I know there's always questions about the four-day work week. So we'll definitely go in-depth about that. Um, we started about uh, late 2010. So we are celebrating, um, we just celebrated our 10-year anniversary. And so at the, our 10-year anniversary, which was wonderful and exciting and we're really looking forward to a long, sustainable, uh, healthy growth future for the next 10 years and beyond. And so uh, we, I get this question a lot, especially when I'm doing interviews of like, what is it actually like to work at Buffer? All of you sort of have a general context of what remote working looks like, I believe, and, and you're here so you understand that concept of, of asynchronous and connecting online and using all of these tools. Um, but here's a glimpse of how we do it. Um, we're fully remote and distributive, and we have been since 2015 was when we cut out our last, um, or we cut out our office, which was uh, a tiny little office in San Francisco that had about one teammate there on a regular basis and decided we probably didn't need that. Everyone just was working from home, even, even if they lived in San Francisco. Um, so one of the big pieces of that and has been since the very beginning is that there's a lot of flexibility within our schedules and a lot of ownership around you controlling what your schedule looks like. Everything from as long as you're getting your work done, that could be working unique days, unique times, working around family schedules, 
Um, it has always been a really flexible workplace in that regard, and I've, I've always really appreciated that. I should give a little context to you. I've been with Buffer since 2014, so I recently just celebrated my seven-year anniversary with Buffer. Um, so it's been really cool because I do believe and I've seen a lot of these, these tenants to stay true. Um, when it comes to tools, uh, absolutely invaluable for us. Um, and, and we tend to grow and change um, our tools a lot. Um, anytime we feel like there's a need or if there's a tool that comes out that could be better, we're very quick to experiment with a new tool and it always challenge and see if we could make the remote workflow a little better and a little easier. Um, especially because we're globally distributed, that adds in another bit of complication um, and a challenge for us to overcome. Um, we really tend to default to asynchronous work, which would be something that you can tune into at any time versus a synchronous um, form of communication would be something like an instant message within Slack or like a Zoom conversation or a webinar like this um, sort of a setting. Um, so we try to do as much as we can asynchronously and then utilize uh, in real time conversation like Zoom meetings and Slack um, direct messages when we have to. Um, we're really loving a tool called Threads. It's essentially a forum tool where you can uh, have back and forth conversations. It's a very beautiful UI and we found a really great um, sense of balance with that because we were able to cut out um, email almost entirely for internal communication. So that's been really helpful for us. Um, we also use Loom and like Cloud App, um, which are great things for sending screen shares or sending screenshots, um, all, the, all sorts of things like that. Notion in particular, we've been using it for our company handbook, for internal wiki pages. And then also we've created um, what we call HQ, which is an internal project tracking system. And it's a very elaborate um, system with the idea that we can utilize the databases, essentially the tables within Notion, to be very transparent and track a lot of the, um, oops, sorry about that, um, a lot of the projects that people are working on. Because aside from just external transparency, Buffer really strives to be internally as transparent as possible with our teammates. Um, so that you never have to look for, or you never have to guess whether or not you're allowed to be privy to something. You can just always assume you are, and that it's more a matter of maybe finding that information. Um, the other one we can't live without is Dropbox Paper. Um, they essentially, um, you know, having real-time collaboration and editing on a document is is absolutely invaluable. It's very similar to uh, like Google Docs and and all that. Um, so again, when it comes to transparency, uh, we shared our salaries early on, and we've been continuing to iterate on how that looks and how we display that. We recently launched our salaries page, so you can go to buffer.com/salaries, and you can see exactly how much I make. Um, so please go ahead and take a look. Um, I feel very grateful. I've even had my grandma look at my salary um, and it astounded her um, to know that she could look up that information. Um, and, and it's a really cool, special thing. Um, so when you go into working at Buffer, you know that this is a part of the, part of the thing. Um, and so that's a big piece of our culture as well is that we have transparency um, internally and externally and we believe that when you build in public, you hold yourself accountable and you expect others to hold you accountable to working better and um, doing the right thing. Um, the other fun thing, it's very useful in hiring <laughs> because we're able to tell people right away what is the salary range that you would be able to make it buffer. Um, we have a lot of the roles broken down. If you don't see a role in there, it's because we don't have it available and we don't expect to have that role available. So you'll notice we don't have a sales team. And so we, we I don't think we have any salary calculator uh, formula for a sales representative at Buffer because we don't plan on hiring that. But definitely go in there, check it out. We do um, base this by location, uh, your experience level, um, and then also the role itself. So. Um, Lots of great things there, and uh, we do talk a lot about the, how we actually formulate those. We bring in all sorts of data points to make sure that the salary is accurate as possible and as competitive as we as we can. Um, a lot of our other business metrics are also public. 
so we share our revenue, which is always fun. Um, and you can see that like a 2020 um, flatlining a little bit. Uh, we could talk more about that later. Um, so you can go to buffer.com revenue slash revenue to see our um, revenue. Um, we're also, oh, I thought I had one more thing, but we also have a couple other things. We're working on um, external dashboards as well. Um, everything from diversity dashboards to, um, uh, uh, we're gonna maybe do like um, employee uh, health uh, metrics later on. So working on more of these initiatives as well. Um, and again, I mentioned, we wanna make sure teammates know where they can find things and that they can find any information or context they want on any decision. Um, so uh, part of that is our Notion databases. Um, and then again, four day work week. Um, we'll talk a lot about this, I think within the Q&A, I can kind of break that down. Um, but this was something that did um, come about as a result of the pandemic in 2020, but we'd also experimented a lot with the four day work week and um, we called them half day Fridays. Um, in the summer of 2019, I believe. So we'd, we kind of flirted with this idea for a while, um, but generally everyone is able to work four day work weeks at full pay. Um, and again, we're also trying to push ourselves. We believe that transparency is a piece that makes us a workplace of the future. And we want to push that with the four day work week. Um, we also offer uh, a lot of great benefits as far as full, um, fully paid 12 weeks of family leave. We also have uh, sabbaticals every five years for those at Buffer. It's a, a six week sabbatical every five years. So we're gonna just keep, keep pushing these boundaries as much as we can. Um, and then current hiring, we have one position available. Um, and then I also wanted to give a hint, um, we, do have at least two more roles opening up in about uh, two or three weeks. We'll be hiring a customer advocate um, and that one will be limited to a couple of different time zones. Um, and so we'll post all of that too. I think we're looking for a West Coast um, time zone and then also um, Australia and Asia time zone as well for a customer support advocate. Um, and we also are probably going to be adding another couple roles the end of the year. Um, we've just been doing some significant hiring this year. Um, so there is a email list that you can subscribe to at journey.buffer.com. And so you can join that list and we'll be sending out an email, especially in May, once that customer advocate role opens. So definitely stay in tuned with that. Um, and then that job page as well, the journey page is a great place to keep in touch on any other changes or openings. Um, yeah, so that was, uh, the end of my brief presentation, I see there's probably a lot of Q&A questions, so I'm going to move over to that tab, and we'll start out there. Um, let me see. Uh, okay, so Elizabeth asked, what does our onboarding and training process look like? Um, so we have uh, essentially a 90-day onboarding program, and we include two really key components with our onboarding, and that is um, a role buddy and a culture buddy. And so uh, part of Buffer is that we're very, um, very tied to our company values. And we really believe that that's the shared foundation that makes us all um, a better and more cohesive company, works, helps us work better together. And so um, we put a huge emphasis on values from the very start. Our first interview within the interview process is a values interview um, where we just talk about culture and values and um, and like whether or not you feel aligned with our, our company values. Um, and that comes before any of the skills oriented um, interview processes. So, um, so our onboarding has a lot of that as well. So we want to make sure that people come in and understand um, what the buffer culture is like, understanding a little bit of our history. We'll talk a lot about transparency. That culture buddy will help answer questions. It'll talk, um, they'll talk about everything from, you know, the time at Buffer where we had to lay off 10 people and, um, uh, you know, what happened from there, what we learned from that and, and things moving forward. So um, there'll be a lot of different pieces that the onboarding um, culture buddy will help you with. And then the role buddy is more of that 
here in your area that can help you with those really role specific things as you get onboarded within those 90 days. Um, so great question there. Um, and then let's see, uh, is there any chance of being paid by cryptocurrencies? Um, I, I don't think at this point, um, we did a while back in our history, pay one of our teammates with Bitcoin. And this was back in 2014 or 2015, right when I started. Um, I don't think that is something that we would be able to do currently or something that we'd be um, or that we're planning on necessarily. But that's a great question, too. Um, OK, first question about the four day work week, pros and cons. Um, so we decided to go forward with a four day work week based on surveys that we did at the very beginning of the pandemic in April 2020. Um, at that point in time, we had closed or we had canceled our in person retreat in Greece. Um, and so we knew that you know, that was already a hard thing to know that we wouldn't be able to meet in person in 2020. Um, and then we were also really trying to figure out how else we could help our team cope with um, this global situation that we knew everyone was was dealing with in some form. Um, and so what we did is we did a ton of employee surveys and we also really targeted um, our working parents at Buffer who many of them had kids that were no longer in schools and so uh, child care was changing and all of these things were really in flux. Um, so we really wanted to know what would help our parents um, along with everyone else. Like everyone, we were just trying to figure out what would work. Like what, was it an extra stipend? <laughs> was it, I don't know, an iPad for everyone? Like what could we possibly do? We were really, really searching for something. And what came up in survey after survey was kind of wanting more time and space for a mental break, for managing family stuff um, for all these different pieces that were were really intangible. Um, and so that's when we floated the idea of doing a four day work week. Um, and we had already seen productivity take a little bit of a dip that year um, and we're OK with it because we realized that was um, going to happen. It was inevitable and it was OK. Um, so we went into the four day work week understanding that there would be a huge productivity drop and that, that, that we were okay and we were willing to accept that. And then it, what we found is after about six weeks of doing the four day work week, we saw that actually productivity hadn't really dipped as much as we thought it would. If anything, it dipped about five or 10%, um, which was surprising. And so we started looking into that, talking to managers, seeing how people were feeling. We saw a very marked increase in people's health and wellness and the stress that they were reporting and feeling a better sense of balance within work and life. Um, and so from there, we, we expanded it to a six month pilot. And within the, the pilot program, we clearly stated that we were going to start tracking productivity again and that we were going to be looking for um, results based on our goals and comparing it to the year prior. And so when we went through that, what we found at the end of 2020 was that productivity was pretty on track from where it had been in 2019, while people were able to take a full workday off. Um, so generally, I think we've seen a lot of benefit to it. Um, I would say that some of the cons that have come with it have been more around um, uh, cutting out some of the extra work sinks and extra work stuff that feels insignificant or feels less important, but does kind of contribute to the overall culture building and community building. So we cut out some of the more fun, casual hangout type sinks where we would do um, like a, a round table discussion about maybe one of our values or we would do a book club, things like that. We started seeing less and less participation in that so that people could focus on their four days of work and then would be able to really take that three day weekend to disconnect. Um, so yeah, so I'd say that was probably the biggest down downside to it. Um, we are also seeing that as we came into some deadlines with quarter one this year and our OKRs, some people were still working a little bit on Fridays. Um, and so I think at times there are instances where people have needed to jump in, just kind of get things done or push through. But overall, people are generally able to do a full four day work week, which is cool. 
Um, let's see. The question is, I see people stay up a long time at Buffer. What do you attribute that to? Um, I think generally we have a very um, loyal individual uh, or loyal team who um, find themselves really connected to each other because we have this solid foundation of shared values. Um, and there are a lot of us who are really connected to the mission and vision of Buffer, which is helping small businesses market and grow online. Um, and so there's a lot of um, excitement there. There's a lot of passion there. Um, we have a lot of really amazing benefits, um, very competitive pay. And so there are a lot of really great things. We really try to support our teammates in all walks of life. Um, so I think there's just a lot of goodwill and essentially Buffer really does care about all of their teammates very individually. And so that's really special. Um, let's see. <laughs> I love that your company offers Kindle and access to free books. Yes, it's probably my number one favorite book. Um, favorite book that I've read last year. Um, that's a great one. I just picked up the book um, uh, Effortless by Greg McEwen, who wrote Essentialism. And Essentialism is one of my favorite books of all times. So I read that about once a year. And so I'm really eager to start the new book, um, uh, Essentialism or um, effortless by the author who did essentialism. Let's see, I'm sorry, I lost my place. I'm gonna get back to it. Um, do you offer internships? We currently do not offer internships. It's something that we would like to do when we get the capacity and sort of the space to, to figure out how that looks. Right now we're a pretty lean team and so we haven't really had the capacity within um, our our HR staff to figure that out or our other teams in order to, to figure out how that could look. But it is something we really wanna do because we feel like that would be a great way to, to give back and get people in the door as well. Let's see, how do you filter for the CVs in the first place? Are you looking for certain keywords? Um, that's a great question. So we prefer people to apply through our forms um, at journey.buffer.com. So what we then go through is we look at and review each application and we look for a couple things. Usually a hiring manager has helped me sorting through those applications and we'll pull out key things that we know people um, will want. Um, an example would be for our marketing engineer role right now, we look, um, we are looking for someone who has both a passion for marketing and maybe a little bit of experience in marketing and in front end design and front end engineering. So we want a little bit of both. So we try to look for those key things. We'll usually have a couple different key points that we're looking for. And then from there, we'll have someone else go through the application or we'll start and do that um, values interview right away. And that values interview is about a 30 minute chat with me and the applicant kind of about life and you know uh, mistakes they've made and, and fun things like that. Um, okay, I asked about internships. Um, how do you deal with time zones? Um, uh, time zones, I, I, I think I mentioned a little bit, we generally default to um, asynchronous communication whenever we can so that if I'm discussing with the rest of my team about um, a small project, um, I put it in a place where my coworker in Singapore can read it and, and can give her thoughts before I make any decision. So usually there's you know about a day or two delay um, and, and that's something we know is, is kind of the, the benefit slash cost of, of asynchronous communication and having a diverse team spread across a lot of time zones. Um, so I think it's worked really well. We, we kind of get into that rhythm and now we really expect it and know how to work through that. Um, and I think we're still a really effective team because of it. Um, and then she also mentioned um, the recruiting process. Um, right now, a lot of our hiring is very much inbound, um, but the general hiring process that we have is that we review the applications, usually takes a couple weeks, um, and then we'll have a values interview um, with me. It's about a half an hour. And then we'll do a role interview with that hiring manager, generally a team or technical interview, depending on the role, to talk with some more people from that team itself, and then a final interview with our VP of that department. So our VP of engineering, if it's an engineering role, our VP of advocacy, if it's a customer advocate role, that sort of thing. And so we try to do that as fast as possible um, and, and kind of make sure we also are able to, 
to meet with a lot of folks to get a good sense. Let's see. All right, what has a candidate done, or what have candidates done in the past that made them really stand out and get the job? How much weight do you put on technical skills versus willingness to learn or hard work ethic, et cetera? That's a great one. Um, I think one of the one of my favorite things about hiring at Buffer is that we have a lot of really unique stories where someone maybe applied once or they applied twice and applied three times and maybe on that fourth time like the stars aligned and it worked out um it it for me really comes down to a mix of having a really natural values alignment which is a really hard thing to force or fake and doesn't necessarily mean that someone is better than the other person at all um, we just are a really unique team um, and we're kind of weird in some ways, which I think is, is wonderful and good. Um, but sometimes it's something you can't necessarily name. Um, we have a lot of very objective ways of scoring and, and making sure that um, applications are still approached in a very um, uh, methodical way and with as little bias as possible. Um, we're really trying to be aware of that and, and pay attention to those best practices. Um, but generally we first look for that values alignment and, and that can come from even just keywords about gratitude or humility or accepting responsibility for things or whatever it is. Like there's some sort of phrase that will usually catch our attention and that kind of pushes an application to the top. Um, and then again, we go through this whole process and we try to then evaluate from one pool of individuals and kind of consider all the pieces together. Um, but all that to say, we tend to look for people who are willing to work, who are eager, who are um, self drivers, who work very independently, because we do know that that's a really important thing when you're working remotely, is that you don't need to be um, micromanaged in that sense. Um, okay, when it comes to tax stuff, um, that depends based on country. Um, we handle most of our um, international teammates, those outside the US and outside of the UK and outside of Canada um, as international contractors. And then those in Canada um, are part of our um, PEO partnership. Um, we have a subsidy in the UK, so we hire through our um, subsidiary there. And then in the US, um, we, we bring people on as full-time employees. Let's see, um, is it possible to live in one time zone, um, Eastern Standard, and apply for another position in perhaps Pacific um, Standard um, if you wanna work those hours? Um, great question, generally, yes. Um, especially in the roles outside of customer support. <laughs> so I'm curious if that question might be around the customer support. Um, position I mentioned that'll be opening up in the West Coast. Um, we have found that when it comes to the customer support roles, asking people to work a different time zone or asking people to work maybe outside of what their normal nine to five would be hasn't been completely successful. And so we're honestly a bit leery to do that. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't still make accommodations or that we have um, flexibility and all of that as well. Um, but it does tend to be something we're a little hesitant toward because we've seen in that role in particular that it can be a bit of a hurdle and, and maybe not set up that teammate for success. All right, what are the upcoming challenges at Buffer? Um, that's a great one. We are working on a few product changes right now. We're consolidating um, three individual products into what we're calling one buffer, um, where all of those products are um, more interwoven and we're going to simplify our pricing structure a bit and so with a lot of big product changes we have a lot of challenges there um, and at the same time we're also bringing in about 20 new people this year um, after not hiring quite as aggressively in the last few years and so I think it'll be a really fun challenge for us to to kind of bring in a whole host of new teammates while working on the product itself and making some big changes there. So um, I think we're all really excited about it. We're really eager to jump in and really kind of drive some things forward. Um, so I think that's been um, a really, a really exciting thing for us this year. 
Uh, let's see. Do you see foresee hire more hiring this summer for remote workers in North America? Um, we hire from everywhere um, as far as um, general um, uh, positions, especially in engineering or marketing or in HR. Um, however, like I said, the port roles we do limit a bit more by time zone. Um, and we will have one position within customer support open in Australia, Asia, um, probably opening up in mid-May. What resources are you using to hire more women of color, particularly black women? I think I maybe see this on your website. Yes, we are working very hard to make sure that we are pulling from as diverse of a pool as possible. And we're targeting a lot of job boards um, specifically for, um, you know, uh, individuals from underrepresented groups. So um, we've had some great responses from groups like Women Who Code, um, We Work Remotely is a, another great one, um, and, and things like that. So we're continuing to always look for groups, um, whether it's a Facebook group or um, job boards. Um, so if you have any great resources, like please email me or message me um, or grab my LinkedIn. Um, we're always looking for more places to post our job listings and then also continue to uh, make sure that we're um, creating a really diverse pool in order to, to pull from there. So, great question. Uh, expanding software development team. Um, we just closed a couple roles, but we are um, bringing in a whole lot of new full stack engineers. And um, like I said, we've got one front end engineer position open right now. Um, Otherwise, we might have one or two more openings the rest of this year. So if you are looking for like a software engineering role, definitely feel free to um, keep watching our jobs page. Let's see. Is hiring normally based on time zones? Um, great one. I think I've covered that a little bit, but generally um, uh, only for certain roles, we do ask for certain time zones. Um, we don't accept um, general applications or resumes at this point um, unless we've got a specific role in mind. Um, that said, I do believe we're probably going to change that approach really soon. Um, we're bringing in some more staffing for the people team in and of itself. Um, so I'm hoping that that changes and we'll be able to do some more um, uh, general recruiting and, and maintain some better pipelines. Um, so uh, definitely keep in touch with me because um, I'm kind of doing a really loose job of that right now. But I would love to keep in touch on LinkedIn and things like that as well. So um, I'll share that. I'll share my link for that very, very soon. Um, let's see. Will any non-tech roles open in the near future? Yeah, we've got the customer support role opening up in mid-May. We might have a marketing role later this summer, um, uh, so there so there might be some more coming. So definitely join the mailing list at journey.buffer.com, um, and we'll be certainly emailing out for both the customer advocate role opening, and then any marketing or other role beyond that. Let's see. Is Arizona considered West Coast? I would say so. So yeah. Arizona would work for probably the West Coast position. Do you do front engineer tests during the interview? And if so, what does the test look like? That's a great one. We do have um, a, a technical test for our full stack role. But for the front end one, we're going to look more at per portfolios than anything else. Um, so for front end in particular, I think we want to just see portfolios of, of, of your work. Um, we are not currently hiring for product or data roles, um, but again, I could maybe see one or two of those opening up later this year. So keep an keep an eye out if if that's of interest to you. Um, do you hire agile leaders and coaches? Um, not really. We use a lot of the agile um, approach and technique within our company, but um, but we haven't hired any of them directly um, or someone to come in to teach that directly. Um, okay, and then Jill also asked to use Agile. Um, I think we use pieces of it, um, but we, when we experiment with things, even with like OKRs, um, we kind of customize it and make them our own. Um, so we, we do things in a very unique way. Um, okay, I'm gonna jump over to the chat because I'm sure there's questions I've missed there. Um, oh, and I'm gonna go most recent to older on this one. Um, so how does your company offer growth? Um, great one. We have a really 
great approach to learning and development um, that is more of a, a, a reimbursement model. So we have about $1,000 allocated per person for courses or career coaching or conferences um, or certifications. Um, and that $1,000 is like pretty much a guideline. We have some people who will take a $1,500 course um, and we'll fully reimburse that. Or someone will maybe just spend $20 on a magazine subscription because that's what they felt was most in line with what they needed for growth. Um, so it does vary by person. Um, and we also then do extra support for maybe someone who um, is in a leadership role or executive role as well. We wanna make sure that they get a little bit of extra leadership guidance so that that can kind of um, you know, flow downward to, uh, to their direct reports. Uh, do you think to expand to Europe? Um, we do have one subsidy in the UK. Um, I could imagine us growing a little farther um, country by country, um, but I think that's more of a long-term plan for us at this time. Um, let's see. Um, oh, someone asked if, you know, if they sent an email asking where they were lacking, would you answer honestly? Absolutely. Um, I'm very happy to answer honest, um, or give, give honest feedback on like what might, um, on what might be lacking or what ways, um, you know, we could improve upon. Um, we just had a session today where one of our teammates who's been with us for, almost six years is moving on to a new company, a new opportunity. Um, and the funny thing about his hiring story was that he had applied and I rejected him myself. I was hiring for that role at the time. And he came back three months later, shared how he had changed and what improvements he'd made based on my feedback. Um, and like, I was so impressed with that and he'd done a great job and we ended up hiring him and he was a part of the team for a long time. So I think, you know, someone who is open to feedback and willing to change and has the self-awareness there is something we really look for um, just overall. Um, okay, cool. Sorry, try to catch the last ones. Cool. Uh, Jake asked how many hours is that in a work day as far as the four-day work week, um, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, we definitely wanted when we cut down to four days we didn't want people to work just four 10-hour days um our ceo has really wanted us to challenge the idea that we need to be um <laughs> that we need to be abiding by something that's maybe a more archaic um form of work um and so we generally do four eight-hour days um but that really does vary by individuals for our customer support team for example, they have a specific number of tickets that's their target, and we also have a, a quality score that we use as well. So there's some some tangible guidelines for them so that they know when their work is done, because otherwise, with an endless inbox of customer questions, um, you know, you would never feel like you could take off um, for a three day weekend. Um, so so we try to give guidance there, and then it's the same with a lot of our more independent or project based roles. Um, so that you know when you're done and when you can close the laptop and when you've you've completed your week, um, we try to give a lot of guidance there. So, um, yeah, great question. Uh, let's see. Do you ever hire writers like copywriters and content writers? Um, yeah, actually, we have before. Um, we have done that quite a bit for our social blog, um, and then we also have an online or I'm sorry, an open blog, which is our company um transparent blog um so i wouldn't say we never will um i don't know that we have any plan right now but um again i think that might be worthwhile to to kind of keep an eye out um yeah yeah that's a great question um okay back to the q a all right i think uh those were most of the questions if there's anything else feel free to, to jump it in the chat or the Q&A. Um, we share a lot on our open blog, which is open.buffer.com. Um, we're very quick to share both all of the good things and um, all of the mistakes we've made. Um, we have a, a, a saying essentially of, you know, if, if, it's, if we try something and we fail, it's okay because we can still write a good blog post about it. Um, and if anything, we probably get more clicks that way. So um, we're, we're always experimenting. We're always trying to push the envelope. Um, 
you know, working at, at Buffer really is um, an adventure. There's a lot of um, great pieces we have in place that give us um, a map. You know, we, we know that we want to serve our customers well. We want to build really quality products. Um, but at the same time, we're up for changing up the structure or um, hiring, you know, someone new or all of those things. So um, it's really cool and a really fun environment. And um, definitely keep in touch with us. Um, sorry, we only have one role posted right now. Like I said, more will be coming. So join that mailing list um, because I think that'll be the best way for, um, for, for knowing about those jobs when they're open. So thank you all. I'll give it maybe one more minute and then we could even wrap up. Um, thank you so much. Let me know if I missed any questions too. I'll go through the list one more time. Let's see. Um, oh, let me put my LinkedIn as well. Um, find my, like I'll share my LinkedIn in this chat. Um, it's somewhere in the event chat as well. Um, but connect with me on LinkedIn, um, follow us at the journey.buffer.com link. Um, and like I said, um, we'll probably be sharing a lot of our triumphs and um, failures along the way online. So just watch out for, for our blogs. So, all right. Thank you all so much. And I will, uh, I'll wrap it up. Thank you all again.